Question 54. State domain and solve x log to the base 2 of square root x square minus 8x equals to log to the base 2 of 3. Okay. To find the domain of this function, we know square root is always positive. Now, within the square root, our function should be greater than or equal to 0, right? So, so the domain, let's first do the domain part of this, right? Now, to find domain, what we can do is, we can equate x square minus 8x as greater than or equal to 0, right? Now, so, and we can also do it graphically. I find it very interesting and useful to do graphically because I can show you what exactly I'm doing. So, I can write this, we can factor this out and we can say, well, this is x minus 8 greater than or equal to 0, right? So that gives us two zeros. One is at x and the other one is at 8, right? And since the coefficient of x is positive, we have a graph parabola which goes like this and goes up, right? And from here, we can see that the domain of the function is anything on the left side of this and right side of that. This is 0 and that is 8. <coughs> so, the domain of this function is that x belongs to real numbers so that x is either less than equal to 0 or x is greater than or equals to 8. So, that is the domain of our function. So, we have done the first part of finding the domain. And now, let's try to find the solution of this equation. The equation before us is log of to the base 2 of x square minus 8x equals to log to the base 2 of 3. Now, this is log to the base 2, that is also log to the base 2, and if both are equal, then their arguments should be equal, right? So, therefore, we can write x square minus 8x is equals to 3. Now, to get rid of square root, we can square both sides. So, we get x square minus 8x is equals to 3 square, which is 9, right? So, which is 9. So, that leads to a quadratic equation, which we can solve. So, we have x square minus 8x minus 9 equals to 0. Now, to solve this equation, we need two numbers whose product should be minus 9. So, we need two numbers p and q whose product is minus 9 and if you add p and q, you are looking for minus 8. So, the two magic numbers for us are minus 9 and plus 1. So, we can factor this as x minus 9 times x plus 1 equals to 0. So, that gives us two solutions. One is x equals to 9 and the other one is x equals to minus 1. Now, let's check if these solutions are within our domain or not. x equals to 9, that is greater than 8, it works. Minus 1, it works. So, as far as the domain is concerned, they are perfectly fine. But remember, whenever we do square, then we actually incorporate errors. So, let's see if it really works in the formula or not. So, it is kind of important always to check solution, right? So, we'll check solution, right? Now, let's check it. So, what we will do is we'll plug 9 and see whether it works or not in the original equation, right? So, what we get? We get log 2 of square root 9 square is 81 minus 9 times 8 is 72. Uh, okay, so this is log 2 of square root of, so 81 minus 72. So we get 9, right? So which is, which is 9 and that is log 2 of, let's say log root. We'll leave it here and we'll see what do we get on this side. Well, this side is already log 2 of 3, right? So well, square root of 9 is 3. So that's perfectly fine. It matches. So we get left side equals to right side. So it works. Now let's check minus 1. 
So if I plug in minus 1 here, then what do I get? I get log 2 of square root of minus 1 square is 1 minus 8 times minus 1. Let me write 8 times minus 1 first, right? So that gives me log 2 of square root of, that becomes plus 9 over just, over just log 2 of 3. So, so that is also perfectly fine. So we have both correct solutions, right? And therefore, we can write our answer as x equals to 9 and x equals to minus 1. So this particular equation has two solutions. One is x equals to 9 and the other is x equals to minus 1, right? So it's important here or in any logarithmic equation to check your answers, right? You may sometimes get answers which are not valid and those are called extraneous answers. Thank you.